Good Thursday afternoon. It is August 8th. I'm Kyle Keel in the KWQC TV6 newsroom with a look at your latest news headlines as well as a check of your first alert forecast. Top of your news headlines, we have an update on a couple of crashes that have happened within the last 12 to 24 hours in the QCA. Uh, the first one we want to bring you updates to is uh, one in Davenport. Uh, Davenport police tell TV6 that a 25 year old driver of a motorcycle died from this crash. The motorcycle and SUV crash happened at the intersection of Brady and Fifth Street last night just after uh, just after 930. Davenport police say the motorcyclist was speeding up Brady Street and was hit by an SUV crossing Brady at Fifth Street. The SUV driver was not hurt in the accident. The name of the motorcyclist is not being released at this time until family is notified. Also into the newsroom a little earlier this morning, two people were injured after a crash at a Comanche roundabout just before 5 o'clock this morning. The video you're seeing right now was actually taking, uh, taken earlier this week on Tuesday. Fire Chief Dave Shuddy says it happened around at the roundabout at 7th Avenue and Highway 67. One of the people had life-threatening injuries and was taken to Iowa City by a MedForce helicopter. Iowa State Patrol is investigating the crash. As I mentioned, TV6 was in Comanche Tuesday talking about with city officials about the U.S. 67 and 7th Avenue roundabout being considered for an Iowa League of Cities People's Choice Award. City Administrator told TV6 that the investment has helped dramatically cut down on the number of accidents at the intersection since it was put in place in January of 2023. So stay with TV6 for updates on this crash as well. And also, the Quad Cities Impact Life, of course, that's the blood donation site in the Quad Cities. They recently sent blood to help those affected by Hurricane Debbie, which made landfall in Florida Monday. Now, Debbie does remain a tropical storm, and it's very slow moving after a landfall in South Carolina earlier this morning. It's been bringing catastrophic rains to the Carolinas and eventually up the East Coast. And because of power outages and travel hazards, many blood drives in that area and across the United States have been canceled. Blood centers from across the U.S. are part of the emergency network and have committed to setting aside extra units of blood on a rotating schedule. Impact Life, founded in Davenport, serves more than 120 hospitals in Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, and Wisconsin. They are in dire need of donations, so please do help out if you can and you can get more information on Impact Life's website. Switching gears now to our first alert weather, and our weather has certainly quieted down after uh, really several active weeks of severe weather and also some hot and humid conditions, but luckily, uh, we are getting a reinforcing shot of some cooler as a cold front tracks through the area tonight. So ahead of that cold front, we have some cloud cover on our live sky view camera. It's uh, showing uh, a little sunshine out there, but mostly this is just some cloud cover moving in. And there's just an outside chance that we could see an isolated shower storm here this afternoon. At the lunch hour, 80 degrees in Moline as well as in Galesburg, 77 in Davenport, Muscatine, Burlington, and Kiwani. A little cooler to the north there where that cold front's kind of peaking its way in, 71 degrees in Galena. Dew points are in the 60s, so yes, it's still a little humidity out there. It certainly does not feel awful like it has been, but that could lead to the potential of an isolated shower to be squeezed out. But once this cold front moves through later this afternoon into the evening, yeah, we plummet that humidity into the comfy category, not only through tomorrow, but through the entire weekend and even into early next week. Then we'll start to creep back up because after all, it's still summer and it will still get hot around here and a little more uncomfortable. But let's enjoy the next few days with this comfortable weather. There's a look at clouds and radar. You can see our eastern hometowns, uh, Kiwani, Galesburg, Princeton. You're all seeing some sunshine right now, but those clouds will quickly increase as that cold front continues moving off to the east. And we see in east central Iowa a few showers trying to get going, and that will be a possibility here locally. But real quick, wanted to bounce over to the east coast. There is that tropical storm that's tropical storm debbie all those green boxes you see kind of hard to see with the rain falling but those are flash flood warnings and in some cases flash flood emergencies we've been dropping about a foot to two feet of rainfall in these areas so that's led to some catastrophic uh, catastrophic flooding in some locations and this is going to continue to ride up the eastern seaboard eventually losing its tropical characteristics as it's now over land but that's going to kind of put a halt in our upper air pattern which is going to keep our weather relatively quiet here over the next few days so as we uh, look at exact track it's grasping onto the idea that we will see increasing clouds here this afternoon it's also grasping onto the idea that we might see just a few showers maybe a isolated thunderstorm develop. I think the threat for thunder is pretty low at this point in time, but could see a brief downpour in some locations. We'll give it about a 10% chance or less of that developing. Uh, those will come to an end as that front sweeps across the area here this afternoon and into the evening, and we'll be left with a clear sky heading into tomorrow morning. 
and that means it's going to be a cool night as well. We're talking overnight lows in the 50s, very crisp air for this time of year. Heading into the day on Friday, we'll see a few clouds from time to time. Otherwise, uh, we will see some sunshine. Those clouds clear Friday night, and that will lead to plenty of sunshine into Saturday. We'll have those northwest winds, and that is going to lead to those cooler temperatures continuing into Saturday as well. So your overnight lows tonight will be in the uh, upper 40s to low 50s. I think some of those lower lying areas in the valleys could be in the upper 40s here early tomorrow morning. So kind of a cool start. Uh, daytime highs about 10, 12 degrees below average. We're averaging in the mid 80s. Tomorrow we'll be averaging in the low to mid 70s. So it's going to be a pretty comfortable day here tomorrow. And if you like tomorrow's forecast, I think you'll have what we have uh, like what we have in store for you here as we head into the weekend as well as we'll look at the seven day forecast. We'll go 75 here on Saturday, 77 on Sunday, overnight lows, upper 40s to low 50s. But notice we will start to creep back up into the 60s for those overnight lows into early next week. And those daytime highs will go to the 80s. So yeah, Mother Nature reminding us it's still August and we're still going to see those bouts of warmer temperatures as well. But not many chances of rain here over the next seven days. So certainly we are drying out after that fairly active stretch of weather. And of course, the Olympics continue on NBC. So we are continuing with these midday digital updates uh, to get you caught up on the latest headlines. So a reminder, there will be no Quad Cities today at 11, no TV6 News at noon, no Quad Cities Live, no TV6 News at 4 today and tomorrow. And then we will return to our regularly scheduled newscasts and programming here coming up on Monday, August 12th. So you can catch all your uh, favorite newscasts, lifestyle shows, and other daytime programming starting on Monday. But for now, that's a look at the latest headlines here from TV6. You can keep up to date with news, weather, and sports on our website, kwqc.com, as well as on our news app and weather app. And we'll see you on TV at 5 o'clock for TV6 News at 5. Have a great day.